All right. Welcome back, guys. Uh, so this uh, is another lesson on TCP. And we're actually going to be using uh, a connection between two FLTK programs. So last period, we did UDP. And this lesson, we're going to do TCP. And actually, the code is very similar. And I'll point out where the code is different. Um, actually, we don't need threading right now, although we'll talk about this in a moment. So we do need socket, and we do need FLTK. I basically uh, make, I inherit from window. And well, you know what? Perhaps before I actually go in and describe what the program, what the code is, let's actually try and run it here. And then I think if I describe the code, it might make more sense. Obviously, we're going to have to run the server first. So let me do that. And then over here, um, now notice I don't have any command line arguments here. Okay, So I've hard coded localhost and the port right into the code. And so there you go. You can see right here on the right, lines 21 and 22, I've hard coded those in. We, will, we already know we've done it many times using command line arguments. I just wanted it to be easy to launch and test. So. Uh, let's, let's run this one now. And let's pull this over here. So at this point, uh, notice I have, I have light buttons here, FL light button, which is basically when you click a button, a little light goes on in that little corner there. This is the server, it says here, and this is the client. So we're going to have to accept for connections on the server side first. So I'm going to click this. now. Now that I've done that, this program is actually frozen. I can't do anything with this program right now. Notice the button is remaining depressed. So I have actually hijacked the FLTK event loop. And I am basically, this program now is frozen until I connect to it and unblock it. Right now, this is blocking. And it's not good to, it's actually not that great to have a blocking line of code in a GUI program, because now you're bro blocking the GUI's event loop. So this is a limitation. I just want to make that clear. But if we come over here now, and I click on connect, so this is going to connect to localhost port 4444. Watch what's going to happen to this button here. Click, and you notice this now let go. And now I have a connection established between the two. And now, here's the crazy thing. I actually don't, um, there's no requirement as to who sends first at this point. I can have the server send first, enter, and the, the client receives, or vice versa, I could have had, and look, I don't have to do round robin anymore, uh, just like the UDP one. Um, I can send multiple uh, from the same one, and I can send back. So now that we see how this works, there are a few more things that we need to be aware of in this. So I'm just hitting Enter, by the way, to send my messages. There are a few more things that we need to be aware of. And that specifically is because this is an established connection between these two programs, we need to be able to close that established connection down properly. And let's go through the code now and take a look. So let me close this program here. And notice nothing bad happens um, when I close that. We had an address already in use. Um, but I think that was from before I actually closed it down. OK. Um, let's get out of this um, so that you can see more code. All right. And let's scroll down. Let's take a look at the server first. So all this code here, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this is just the FLTK part of the GUI interface. OK. I'm, I have my light button. That says accept connection. I have my input where I can type messages into and my, my multi-browser, which will 
uh, show messages from the opposite end or my, uh, my, the person who I'm speaking with. Uh, I do have a few other things here. I do have a callback for the, the con button. Okay. So um, here on line 16, I have a callback for the, con for the con button, which is the connection button. Uh, I also have a callback for the input. And also, uh, may have, I'm not, can't remember if I mentioned this was default, but it's not. Uh, FL when enter will trigger the callback for the input widget where you type because I just want to be able to type something and hit enter. I don't want to have to, have an, to click another button to send the message. So what's the callback for the connection? Here it is. I specify my host and port and notice these are not self because I'm not going to need them for outside of this function. Uh, I create my socket. This is sock stream, and notice I've put a comment here as this is being most likely this is file, going to be file descriptor number three after zero one two for input output and error. Then this is the part that's different from the client. I bind and I listen. Okay. Now this is the this part is really interesting because if we come over here and look, and th this is quite different from UDP because now remember in UDP we've only we don't really have a connection we're simply sending packets to a port uh, and an address or an address and a port however in TCP we have a connection when does that connection happen it happens when this line returns and this line line 28 is the problem kind of like you know I'm calling it a problem line but that line is blocking. Nothing else is blocking here except for line 28. So essentially now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm freezing my, my GUI program in this callback. As soon as I click connect, this connect button, my program stops on line 28 until accept is returned and it'll only return from line 25 in the client. This isn't, this isn't, you know, this is having a blocking line isn't great. Um, we'll try and ex uh, address this later, but for now, we understand the limitation and I, I'm really just interested in showing you the networking part. I didn't want to complicate it too much with also uh, showing you this, uh, like a, a workaround for the blocking code. Anyways, let's move on. Um, notice though that this is file descriptor four. Remember, this is now the second socket that we have created. When this line returns, we now have another socket. We have the listening socket, which is socket S. And then when line 28 returns, we have another socket called self.con or our connection socket, okay? And notice that the file descriptor now that I'm going to watch is not going to be the listening socket. No, no, no. It's the connection socket that I'm listening to. Okay? That, that's why I go self.con.file number, which, by the way, is more than likely going to be number four. That's why I put that comment there. And then I do the magic, the FLTK magic, where I actually ask the FLTK event loop to watch that specific uh, file descriptor which is connected to the socket con, okay? And ask it to execute this callback when we receive data on that or when it's, when it's ready to read. Now, um, maybe we should hop down to the receive data. Okay, so here is receive data, and notice receive data here is going to be just the same, actually, as this one. I'm going to get the data from the socket, which is, which is ready with data for me. I'm going to print it just because I want to see it. Now, here's the interesting thing, is when this, clock it's, when this socket closes down, 
or actually I should say, when the other side closes the socket, the last thing that's sent is the empty binary string. Okay? So, and that's defined by B for binary because notice I'm not decoding it here. I'm not decoding data yet. And so, therefore, I'm going to say if data is equal to that empty binary string, which signifies the end, then close the connection. Okay? Now, the other thing I optionally could do, it's not, I just put it here as a comment to show that this is an option as well. Not only am, could I close the connection, but also I could remove the file descriptor from being watched. So notice up here is where I got went fl add fd, right? To basically ask fltk to watch if any data comes on that uh, file descriptor. And here I'm saying, well, listen, the connection's now closed. I, I don't want FLTK to continue to watch that file descriptor now because, and I think that's, by the way, where that error came from uh, before. So in essence, I'm, I was still asking FLTK to watch something which is not going to be receiving any data on it. So probably a good idea not only to close the connection, but also to ask FLTK, stop watching that, okay? Because we're not going to, we don't, we don't need it anymore. Now, if data is not equal to the null, you know, not, sorry, not null, but the empty binary string, then it must be something. So let's add that and let's decode it first and turn it into a regular string and let's add it to the browser, okay? Which is our, kind of like our list box. Um, so that's the code there, but actually there, there is a couple of things which I haven't gone over. One of them is the send. This is just one line. Okay, I am using send all. And I'm, I'm noticed I don't have to specify where to send it, unlike UDP, which I do, because here now I have an established connection with, with the con socket, and so I can simply send to the con socket, and I'm simply going to get the value, which is the text inside the input widget where I type. And I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna encode it all in one shot. So it's essentially one line of code. Now, the last function which we're going to look at here is the close function. This function is a callback for what? Well, let's scroll up and let's see where the close is right here, line 14. What widget is that? Self.callback is self.close. Notice this widget is the instance of, because it's self, it's the instance of TCP win. And what is TCP win? It's an FL window. Oh, so we just set the callback for the window. That means when you click, you know, like if it's a window, you click on the X to close the window at the top and the callback is going to be executed. So what should we do in the close callback of this window? Well, guess what? What if you try and close the window before you've established a connection? That's going to actually cause your program to crash and then you're not going to be able to close the window you're going to actually have to kill the process. I'm not sure how to kill processes in Windows, but I mean, that's a really ugly way of closing your program down. So what I did is I, I used try accept. Essentially, if you try and close the window before you have a connection, line 35 is going to throw an error, and you're never going to get to self.hide. And self.hide is essentially closing down the window. Okay, so I've got that as finally. So what that means is in a try except finally, whether I have an except, when, whether an exception is detected or not, finally will always be executed. So if I have an exception, great. Say closing without a connection so that line 35 is not going to cause my program to crash or this function to crash. 
and then I'm going to hide the window. Okay, so let's look now at the client. And so essentially, I mean, the code looks pretty much the same here in terms of init. Now, the connection here is different because we are making the, so these first three lines are the same, okay, as, over, as on the server. We're still making a socket S, but now we don't bind and we don't listen. Instead, we just go uh, connect the socket S to host and port specified here. Okay, now whether you get those hard coded or whether you get them from sysargv, or in this case, perhaps you could even have another input widget if you wanted to, to for the user to type them in, it doesn't matter. Um, but now, notice the big difference here is that when we connect on line 25, this unblocks line 28 over here, but then notice the difference in terms of which file descriptor we're watching or which socket. On the client side, we're actually watching socket S. On the server side, we're actually watching uh, socket con, which is what S is connected to on this side. Okay, So client socket S is connected to server socket con. The listening socket is still listening, Okay, but that's not that's not the socket that does the, commun the, the established communication through. So, why do we, on the client side, we, we obviously have to watch uh, socket S because that's where information is going to come to us. And notice uh, another thing is different here, and that is on the, uh, on the, well, especially on the send and the receive, notice here on the send and the receive, we're sending on the server side through socket con, and on the client side, we're sending through socket S. Okay, so that, that makes sense, right? And so obviously, when we receive data on the server, we're gonna receive through con, and we're gonna receive through S on the client. Okay, but essentially all the other code is identical. Okay, and you know, for good measure, perhaps we can even uncomment uh, the remove FD for self.FD. And notice self.fd here is going to be most likely file descriptor number three. Uh, but on this side, self.fd is most likely going to be file descriptor number four for con. OK? So once again, when we run the programs, here's the server side. And here is the client side. And so. You don't, you don't have to use light buttons, but I just thought it would be kind of cool. But essentially now, the first thing you have to do is, I mean, you know, like, if we, if we click this one first, watch what happens. See, now we're going to get an error. It's going to say connection refused. So if we try to connect first, this isn't going to work. We first have to accept connections here, and then we can connect. Notice the light goes off. but. That doesn't matter, that's just FLTK. Every time you click it, it's like a flip-flop, the light goes on and off. But essentially now, it should work, and it does, and I can send back stuff like that, okay? And it doesn't matter who I stop first. If I stop this one first, okay, um, notice this one receives the, um, the binary empty string, and then I can close this one, and um, everything's fine. So that error was from before. Okay? So that is TCP asynchronous, um, but we do have the blocking uh, line 28 on the server side. Okay, so. We have just made a discovery, which I am very excited to tell you guys about. And that is, we figured out a way to stop the blocking of the accept line in a similar fashion to, to the way that we are watching the connection. Remember uh, here, 
well, I've changed the code now, so it's not the same anymore. So essentially what I did, or perhaps a good thing to do here, it would be to show you both codes side by side for the server and see how I changed. Okay, on the right here, I have my old code where I had my listening, my binding and my listening, and then my accepting or waiting for a connection here on line 28. What did I do? Well, I created, so I stopped after listen, after this, after this listen line here, I created a couple of new file, uh, sorry, lines on inside the button callback for the connection. I actually made a new uh, file descriptor, and this time I called it FDL for the listening file descriptor, S. Okay, so self.s file number, and that's probably going to be three, as I mentioned before, right, up here. Um, but then what I did is I, I also added a file, a watch, on the listening file descriptor, for, which is socket s. And then I said, listen, call this function, self.connect, if information comes in on that socket. Now, why would information come in on socket s? Well, socket S is the listening socket, so the only time information really is going to come in on that one is if someone wants to connect. Ha ha! So now, where where is connect on this side, right? Connect. Oh, oh, sorry, I don't have the the client code up anymore. This is both server code. This is my old server code on the right, but essentially, I mean, I can show it to you kind of here. It's underneath. Uh, nope, it was. Okay, so here was the client, right? Here, here was the connect. And um, perhaps this might be a bit confusing because I use self.connect as the function, but this, is, this connect is on the socket. This connect is a uh, callback function that I have created, okay? So essentially, this connect connects to this function here. Um, now, let's go back to the old server code. Okay, so here on the right now is my old server code. On the left is the new server code. Notice how things have changed. W once I add the file descriptor for the listening socket, that's the end of the, the con, so there's nothing blocking in the callback for the button here. But I do specify the function name to be called when data comes in on socket S, the listening socket. And that function is here. And notice um, I had to pass in the, the argument here, right? Instead of it, in, you know, unlike a widget callback, this is, a, this is an add FD callback, a file descriptor callback. So in this case, you have to add, uh, send the file descriptor. Um, okay, and now what I do here is I say, so now this, is the, this was the blocking line from before. Okay, now it's no longer blocking because the only time this is going to run is when a client is actually trying to connect. So con connect from the client side causes this function to run and then it accepts which returns right away and then once it returns that's when we get the file descriptor for the newly established connection here and notice because we're using self it, we can access it throughout the class and then we add a watch not on the listening socket now, but as we were doing before, okay, all we were trying to do this all in one function, essentially all I have done is I've separated that one function into two functions and established a mechanism for this function to be called when the listening socket receives data, which is when some client is going to try and connect. And this, in fact, prevents the blocking of the accept line because when we run this now we're accepting we're not accepting yet because we're not we haven't clicked but I'll run the client and notice 
okay? Now, all right, uh, my apologies. So I was actually trying to run two servers and that's not gonna work. I was actually running the new server on the left-hand side and the old server on the right-hand side, thinking that it was the client, it's not. So okay, let's try this again. So on the left-hand side is the new server with uh, this function separated into two and let's, let's run it there. Okay, so that's running now. Let's come over here to the client, the actual client, and let's run that. And now let's start up the server. Okay, and let's connect the client to it. And notice nothing blocked here. And so now I can send something and I can send something back and we're good to go. Okay, so our program works, and we didn't have to, we didn't have to use any threading, and uh, hey, that's pretty cool. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time.